What's going on everybody? Welcome to The Obsession. We got a special show for you guys today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our May projects, but we're actually going to introduce you to a special person, a guy we met uh, probably about two or three months ago. I've been talking back and forth with his teacher. Big outdoorsman. We got Landon here with us today. All right. We got a couple questions we talked with Landon. Um, Landon, we're going to give him a couple questions and Landon will speak to us on his tablet. So he'll give us the answers and uh, we'll be able to let everybody know what's going on. We have a couple questions we had asked him earlier. We're going to run through some of those and then we're going to talk about our May projects. So uh, we'll start the show off with basically Mike and I talk about our May projects, what we're going to start with. And I'm going to ask Landon a couple questions. So number one, Landon, on your guys' property, you guys put food plots in? Okay, and it says you had talked or answered a question for me earlier about you guys use a lot of clovers, chicory, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys use any uh, like fall brassicas, anything like that? Do you help your dad or go out there and do it? How many acres do you guys have? Perfect. I can see that. Seven acres, but my grandparents have 111 acres. Nice. 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 Seven acres of food pots, that's quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's right around what we try to do, too. Yeah. So <laughs> that is a lot. That is a lot. So, Landon, just, it was your birthday the other day, right? So you turned 18. Going to graduate this year. Congratulations. Lucky you. Yeah. Yep. Get out in the real world. I see here at the back, you, uh, you want to start your own business for hunting? Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great idea. You planning on doing any schooling after high school? Eh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. I mean, no, you need to get out there. Yeah. And get that education. We did it actually. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to believe, but. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it's taken a few years to get get where we are, what we've done. But uh, we're going to talk. Mike and I are going to talk a little bit about our May stuff and what we've got going on. Then we'll ask you a couple more questions, run through some of the stuff here. Are you good with that? Right on. He's good with it. He's good with it. All right, well, May projects. First thing we're going to end up having to do is corn. Make sure all of our TSI is done. Yep. Going to work off of that. Yeah, we like to get out there now, and uh, this is a time to get your trees cut um, if you're going to do them uh, before everything's green. Right. We hate doing it when it's green. No, I don't. Yeah. Um, stand prep or blind preps, uh, including ground blinds. Right. You know, which, which land it likes to hunt out of. Yeah, I see that. Um, we like to get all that stuff done early and not be out there messing right. around, especially, you know, later in the summer. Um, weather's a lot nicer now, too. Well, not nice, but nice for that stuff. Right. It's cooler and, you know, less bugs, less stuff like that. Yeah, and that's a pretty big deal. You know, well, on the Triple B, Mike and I, the whole new layout we're showing you guys, um, basically, put three quarters of a mile of edging in based off of using corn and uh, switchgrass. So we're using uh, east-west transition and then vertical transition up and down the hills to make uh, spots for our tree stands and entrance and exit routes for us. So we're not educating the deer, which will be able to hold bigger bucks onto the property. Uh, Mike's layout. I mean, you're on your fifth year now. Yes. So we're hoping for a lot of good things this year. We are, but there was a lot of good bucks last year. They didn't shoot. We did a lot of hinge cutting last year to yeah. get that stuff ready, um, to get our, uh, maybe our bedding areas ready. Mm -hmm. um, always food pot stuff to do, I'm sure you can agree with that. Oh yeah. We, we always like to do our food pot stuff, um, mostly for the fall. Right. Um, we don't really care what's there in the summer. Yeah, I see. They're not going to stay there anyway. Yeah, Landon and his dad do a lot of stuff prepping for fall stuff. And. Uh, yeah, you know, all the hinge cutting and everything that you did last year, it's really going to open up things for that property, yep. I think. And now you have you did your frost seeding and everything. And yep, I did do frost seeding. I refrost seeded again just because of... <laughs> it's clover. Yeah, I like to overkill it. Yeah, bit, but, <laughs> can't have um, too much clover. The weather's been great for that. We got, you know, a lot of rain <clears throat> um, on top of that. And then we did get that crappy snow, but that's perfect. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the seed's already there, and, the you know, your snow's going to melt straight down and take the seed into the ground. Yep. You know, especially for your clover. Yeah. Did you guys do any frost seeding landed on the clover stuff or not? You guys just do it in the fall time? Yeah. Get it ready to go? I've seen that in your answer. Your dad, had, you and your dad had done that. Um, 
You know, like I said, um, the other things, obviously our TSI program that we've got, that should be done here by the end of April for sure is when I, I when when it starts to green up, guys, you don't want to be hinge cutting trees and things like that. If you're going to drop something, that's another story, but uh, it's getting pretty late here in the beginning of May to hinge cut anything. I even yeah. went, I wouldn't recommend it. No, we actually thought we were going to do some hinge cutting at my place until we went out there again and looked. Yeah, we ended up not doing it. Yeah, I reassessed the whole situation. So we just there. Left them. Yep. But the big thing, obviously, corn going in. Everybody will be putting corn in. Ground temperatures are going to be coming up, so your switch grass is going to be, and your clover are going to be coming up 55 degrees on the soil temperatures there, and uh, it'll germinate with enough water, <coughs> which it appears that we're going to have enough water here. Beginning of May seems to be uh, looking pretty good for moisture. Yeah, but, it, it sucks looking at the forecast, but we needed it. No, yeah, you know, yeah. We really needed it here. We had a big drought here. <coughs> Mike and I, I got to throw this in. Mike and I got some really good news today. Yeah, we did. We yeah. drew our through our uh, North Dakota mule deer tags. Yep, so we'll be going to North Dakota again. You guys will be able to see those hunts. Nothing can wreck that day today. Oh, no. No, I can't have a bad day once I got that tag, I'll tell you that. Yeah. No. We actually applied for a once-in-a-lifetime ram tag, too. Yeah. We haven't heard yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not getting yeah, that. Yeah, I know. You know. <laughs> Makes me feel good thinking I might get a play for, yeah. a drop for that. I tell you what, I'd sure like to go out west and shoot another elk like what Landon shot. Yeah, I know he's got. I, I see this picture. This elk it doesn't even fit on this piece of paper over here. I know. And you got you got a thing up in the house. You got a wall big enough for that thing. Put a bigger wall in for that thing. Oh, yeah, he had it to build bigger than the ones we've shot. He, oh, I know. <laughs> he had to build his own room probably. Yeah, well, you know, might as well make it big now. Yeah, he's on a roll. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I know. I see see he shot a bunch of bucks and stuff too. Shot one over a decoy last year? Mm. Yeah, that's fun, <laughs> isn't it? They come in, all sidestepping. That's cool. Yeah, we done that. There's a bunch of video. Of, we had done that too. We talked about that in a couple podcasts in the past about decoy hunting. There's a lot to that to do it right and get it be successful every time. We've got a great video of what not to do also. Oh yeah, we got a lot of those. Yeah. If you want to learn what not to do, we can show you how to that's We're good at it. We're definitely more than happy to show people our learn our, our failures. Our yeah, yeah, our failures as much as our successes, <coughs> especially on the show. So right. But uh Landon says he was hunting since he's been five years old. Going out with your dad and stuff. When did you get to shoot your first animal? How old were you? Oh yeah, so you're ten you, years old. Yep. Follow, followed the Wisconsin law, didn't you? <laughs> all right, that's perfect. I'm a hunter's education instructor too, so I know all those rules. Uh, watch well, it, watch it over there. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep an eye on you now. All right, <laughs> checking it out. That's cool. Um, and then you were, what was that a turkey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When did you shoot your first deer? <laughs> <laughs> when you were ten, also, right? <laughs> yeah, see, see. Shot turkey with his crossbow too. Well, he's got me on that. Screwing around. I know. Carl. Yeah, I know. I, just, I am not good at shooting with a bow. It's just. I'll tell you what, Landon. Probably the so, best shot yeah. I know. He can't hit a turkey with yeah. that bow. I shot. I shot national tournaments and done well. I've shot, you know, a lot of the local stuff now and done pretty darn well. I cannot shoot a turkey with a bow. I just. I don't even try it anymore. <laughs> To be honest, I just, if I'm going turkey hunting, I carry a cannon. He just gets a gun. I cheat. That's, what, that's what it is. But actually, this time of year, I'll be honest, now you have first season, so you get to go out. Like today was opening day. Yeah. Anybody send you pictures of birds out strutting and you're stuck here in school? <laughs> no, he's not coming. Uh, if you want to see some, my brother in law sent me some. I could show it to you. Oh, he didn't boy. shoot one, though. Yeah, it's well, not. Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> You hunt the rest of the week, then? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I got her. No, yep. because now I'm school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hey, you know what? Think of it this way. Yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. Think of it this way. School's your job. So we get the weekend. Right? Yeah. We, yeah. All right. Get the weekend. Just think. When you get our age, you get to go to work every day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And then sometimes, even Saturdays, and in my case, Sundays, Seven days a week at times, you but overachiever. No, nah, I don't know if I want to call it that. There's moments, you know how it goes. <coughs> Plus, running our own businesses. Mike has two businesses. So he runs his own automotive business, and what else? Motorcycles. Motorcycle shop, yeah. 
Yep. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And me, I got my regular job. I'm an engineer. I work for Seiko Foods. I worked for Oscar Meyer in Madison for 25 years. And then together, Mike and I came up with Rush Outdoors. And we've been doing this for 20 plus years. 22, I think 22 years. 22 years we've been <coughs> hunting together and filming and doing all this stuff. So, we're old, Landon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the teachers thought that was funny. <laughs> so, I asked Landon, I said, uh, what type of uh, food does he put out, or him and his dad put out for, for deer? And Landon's answer was clovers, basically, right? A lot of clovers for deer hunting. Mm -hmm. You guys put that out in the summertime, then? You've also got a good tip here when you're just starting on archery hunting. What's that? Don't forget any of your gear. Oh, I'm not really good at that. That's, I mean, we throw it all in a bag and, you know, it kind of works. I don't forget his arrows last year once. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Good thing Mike and I shoot the same arrows. I thought I'd throw that out there just yeah. in case you forgot. Get this, we drove a whole hour landed to get to my land. I didn't have any bullets. <laughs> I'm like, Mike, do you got any extra arrows? Yeah, here's two. Yeah, here's a couple. You'll be all right. So that's a very good tip. Yeah, very good tip. <clears throat> so you guys put it in in August, I assume, that's what you're saying? That's usually a good time to start putting stuff in. We do a lot of uh, brassicas and stuff that time of year. I'll put that in and then put some turnips and stuff in the ground. You guys hunt at your place at the house or do you hunt over at Grandma's more? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Gives you good opportunities, right? You can split it up. Mike and I do that a lot too. Like, he's got a property, Mike lives up towards Beaver Dam area, and I live, my property's actually out by Richland Center, okay? So, wherever we've got deer that we think we can get to, so we're hunting individual bucks, and we'll try and go back and forth between the two so we can be successful. Try. And that's, well, try, yeah, the word try is, it's a big thing. <laughs> Do you know how that goes? They don't just walk in front of you, no. right? So I see you got a power chair here. You've got a track machine too for hunting? Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's a neat machine. One of my friends actually, who's an older gentleman, lives out by Arena, actually has a power chair just like that. He's been out to North Dakota, not with us, but going to the same place where we hunt mule deer and stuff. His name's Mike, and uh, he, he's been very successful like you, hunting animals with a crossbow. Mike uses a vertical bow as much as he can anymore. Now he's he's old too, like us, so he shoots a crossbow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Landon, you shot quite a few bucks with your crossbow. Just three bucks. Yeah, but that's three bucks. Yeah, that's three more than a lot of people. Yeah, trust yeah. Me. and you're only 18, right? Yeah. yeah, that's not bad. You know when I shot my first buck? Uh, How old I was? Oh, Remember? Yeah. Well, is that the one I mounted? Yeah, no. The one before that. I was 25. Well, yeah, you were 20. Yeah, 25. 27 years old. I didn't shoot my first buck until I was, let's see, I got back from the Air Force, from the military. I would have been 22, 23, 22 or something. See, he had a jump on me right away. Yeah? This guy. Well, I had to think about it. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, it was a long time. Wait a yeah. second. Come on, guy. That's a good start. It's all the time. It's a good start. Well, you know, I gotta keep you on your toes. Jeez. Come That's on. That's a good start. It is a good start. You got a great elk, I'll tell you that. I don't have that big of an elk. I'd love to. Yeah, your elk is awesome. That's nice elk. Big six by six. <laughs> Had fun doing that. Did you get invited to go somewhere? Where was that? Oh, in Pennsylvania. That's cool. That was fun. You said you were hunting with the vice president of Ten Point or something? You went to Wyoming for animal, right? Mike and I are going to go to South Dakota this That's year. That's where we shot our first one, though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we went to Wyoming. Great luck. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's nice out there. A lot of flat <clears throat> land out there. <laughs> uh, I think, you want to hear something really cool? You know how far Mike shot his antelope at? With a bow. With a bow. What do you think a normal shot is? How far do you think a good shot is? First, that's what I want to see what you think. 70 yards. 
70 yards. That's a good that shot. That's a great yeah, shot. That would be a great sure. shot. That's for sure. Yeah, Mike shot his at 118. And I shot mine at 93. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I could do it again, though. I don't know. better than. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You're pretty good right now. Yeah. But, yeah, that's uh, that's long-distance shooting when you're out there, isn't it? That's for sure. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So, turkey hunting, you know, that's close range. Within reason. If you're shooting a crossbow, eh, 30 yards, 40 <laughs> yards maybe max. Yeah. I don't even shoot that far. Well, like I said, I can't shoot them with my bow anyway. I gotta use a cannon. You shoot at them all day. Well, right, yeah, there's that. Lay, lay some feathers on the ground, I can tell you that. I'm not, not scared to do that, for sure. Six turkeys with a shotgun. Six turkeys. I don't think I've shot six turkeys. I don't think I've shot six turkeys. I don't know. Uh, I am not a good caller, though. I can throw that out there. Yeah. Most of the time I get in the ground line and I'm thinking about what I should be doing for deer season. Because deer season's 365 days a year. Yeah, it's a warm up. Turkeys are a warm up. I really only get one one season. I only take one season because the rest of the time we're getting ready to do all of our land prep and all that so we can chase big white tails. For sure. We should probably talk a little bit more about what we're doing on in May for projects. Yep. So. Like I said, on the Triple B, we'll be doing all the corn. We'll be checking our switchgrass. I have to do another spraying, so 2,4-D and glyphosate over the top of where my switchgrass is. I'll probably also hit where we're going to put the corn. For me, because of last year, we won't be putting our corn in until June. Beginning of June is when we'll put my corn in. Well, that'll work out good, though, because we're going to do mine in May. Right. So. And, and the reason for that, just so everybody's aware, um, my my property's in this great big valley and I could still get frost on the property. So if I get frost and it destroys my corn and I reseed, but the other stuff that I put in, like last year, still comes still up, grows, yeah. it's a mess. Right. We don't want a mess. A lot of, uh, so a lot of prep work in May. <clears throat> yeah, basically that's what you're doing. Yeah, get your stuff set up now. Um, you know, like we've laid out both of our properties. Right. Walked everything again. I know we're gonna go walk yours again. Yep. Um, sometimes things change, but it's a good time to get that stuff done now. And assess. Especially your stands. Right. You know. Make sure you're assessing everything as yes. you go. And if you had a bad experience last year, ask yourself why. You know, if a deer did a certain <clears throat> thing, so um, I, for one, had a really nice deer circle downwind of me. So I know why he did it. But how am I going to stop another mature deer from doing it? So basically, we're blocking that off. Yeah. So we think we have it figured out. Well, yeah. Well, they they're not big because they're stupid. I can tell well, you that. Well, that that leads into two girls. It's a good time to check those trails. This right. is a really good time to still see those trails that they used all winter. Yeah. Um, before stuff starts growing up, so you can kind of assess if your stands are in the right spot. If they're not in the right spot, if you need to add a stand. Right. Pop and don't some be cameras up. Yeah. Don't be afraid to add stands. Well, don't be afraid to leave your stands that you know you're semi-successful in. Leave them there and add another stand. Now, depending on how much, you know, free cash you have, that could be difficult. I would assess whether or not I thought the other place was a, if I find another spot, whatever one has the highest percentage for me. You know, but if you can add another stand, Mike and I have a lot of stands on our property, and I'll be honest, there's probably... 30% of them we don't even hunt in a year. But they're there just in case we have to. Yes. So. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. But that's about the end of our May stuff. I mean, like you said, just make sure that you, you, you know, assess your situation. Get it done in the first two weeks of May because green up's coming fast. Yeah. And it, Especially one, with the rain. Yeah. If we get a couple warm days, everything's gonna be green. Once the green up hits, you're, you're, you're done. You can't really go and assess the certain parts of things. Also, uh, don't be afraid to redo your mock scrape, so check your vines and everything. Uh, checking your vines to see if they're actually at waist height like we tell you guys to. Um, that way the fawns, does, and the bucks will utilize that. It creates a social structure for the deer and then they come in and out of there constantly. That's a big deal in the fall. 
and uh, don't put don't put a few of those too. Right. And on my property, we're going to have to. There's one or two in particular we're going to have to replace because the deer basically chewed them up to about four and a half feet. They broke them off at the bases. Some of them bigger deer. And then we're going to uh, probably add one or two to try and uh, control the movement up on that ridge. So that's about it for me. What do you got? Anything? Not much. Just wait for September. Right on. Already. Landon, you wait waiting for deer season? Or are you just all pumped up about turkey season? Wait for Saturday. I yeah, guess. I know. It's Saturday. He'll be up <laughs> there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, Saturday, I'm in the woods. <laughs> it sounds like a plan. Right. Yeah, Saturday I'm going out too. It's supposed to be nice, sunny. Birds are going to be moving early. So hopefully you got a good spot near a roost, right? You guys going to go out and put them to bed on Friday night or? No? All right, well. You don't need to do that. Yeah, we're landing hunts. They just walk right yeah, in right. anyway, you know? He's like, hey, he's like, yeah, they're just coming anyway. <laughs> He's going to walk in. I'm going to look at him. You guys film your hunts at all? No? <clears throat> I like to. You'd like to. Yeah. yeah. It puts another aspect to it. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on with a camera, I can tell you that. You know how many deer have been saved with a camera? A lot. Uh, especially in our cases. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can guarantee. Yeah, it's tough. There's, there's a lot. <laughs> it's awesome, or it's the biggest pain at times. It just oh, yeah. Depends. Yeah, there's times that it's like, I wish I didn't have the camera. Tell Dad to start running a camera. Right. Get yourself a little handheld Free unit. Up. Tell me he's a cameraman. Yeah. Don't ask, just yeah, designate, man. That's what we do. Yeah. Guess what? You're cameraman. Huh? I get it all the time, Carl. You're camera guy. <laughs> that's because Carl probably already killed a buck. Well, that could be too. I mean, there's moments. Hey, I killed my buck this year because Mike told me to go to a certain spot. Did it. What do you think of that? Pretty good? I'm right once a month. Once a month. I never know when yeah. that's going to be. Hey. He had a good chance at a giant too yeah. that night, but he, he... I wrecked it. I messed it up myself, trust yeah. me. He called to him yeah. too much, and Deer's like, nope, not going over there. Yeah, I did exactly what I told people not to do. <laughs> not going to lie. Yep. I got really anxious. Yep. That was a pretty good deer, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then well, he... It looks like we're almost done with this one. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching The Obsession. We'll get with you guys next week. Be sure to check it out on YouTube, Rush Outdoors Wisconsin. Thanks, Landon. Landon, for coming in with appreciate us today. You. Yeah, appreciate you coming in. Appreciate you watching and everything. And subscribing. And subscribing. Okay, y'all. Hook, hook, hook some brothers up, Don't all right? Don't forget to subscribe. All right, we appreciate that. You guys have a good day. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody.